Radio Building Blocks. This is part two. If you haven't done so, please watch part one first. In part one, I went into Radio Building Blocks. How a small number of unique stages could be put together to form various radio projects. There are only really four basic stages that you need to know. Oscillators, amplifiers, mixers, and filters. If you know all those four, you'll be able to put together a wide variety of transmitters, receivers and transceivers. In this part, I'll show you how. I'll start off with a simple direct conversion receiver, only using three or four stages. I'll make improvements stage by stage. Then we'll move on to SuperHet receivers, which offer some performance advantages. Basic transmitters are next, starting off with CW, double sideband, single sideband and FM. I'll demonstrate how a receiver is just a transmitter backwards. I'll finish off with transceivers and how the same module can be shared between transmitter and receiver. A basic direct conversion receiver. The incoming signal from the antenna is mixed with a locally generated signal from the RF oscillator in the mixer stage. That difference is audio frequency. That's amplified and fed to the headphones by the audio amplifier. Here I've added a bandpass filter. That provides selectivity and rejects unwanted signals from getting into the mixer. A straight direct conversion receiver is not very selective. The low pass filter provides audio selectivity and improves the receiver's ability to reject nearby interfering signals. That fits between the mixer and the audio amplifier stage. To improve the receiver's sensitivity, I've added another stage, an RF amplifier. That's between the front end bandpass filter and the mixer. To make the receiver more stable, I've added an RF amplifier between the RF oscillator and the mixer. That provides isolation isolating the RF oscillator from the mixer. That makes the receiver more stable. Here's another audio amplifier placed between the mixer and the low pass filter. That's a low noise audio amplifier and it improves the receiver's sensitivity. Here's another bandpass filter between the receiver's radio frequency amplifier and its mixer stage. In conjunction with the front end bandpass filter, that further tightens the receiver's selectivity and ability to reject out of band signals. Here is a high performance direct conversion receiver. A lot more stages, but commensurately better performance. It has a tight front end that rejects out of band signals. It's got a buffer amplifier that makes the oscillator stable by isolating it from the mixer. And it's got an audio filter which provides improved selectivity. The incoming signal from the antenna is fed to a bandpass filter which picks off the desirable frequencies that is mixed in the mixer with the locally generated signal from the RF oscillator. That produces a signal at another frequency. That is selected very carefully with a bandpass filter. It might only be a few kilohertz wide. That intermediate frequency signal is fed to another mixer and RF oscillator and that converts it to audio which is then amplified by the audio amplifier and fed to the speaker.
an even better superhead with an extra stage added. That stage is another amplifier. It's just after the bandpass filter. That's the intermediate frequency amplifier and it improves the gain of the receiver. Yet another stage added to the superhead receiver and it's an RF amplifier. That increases the sensitivity of the receiver to weak signals and is desirable if the receiver is covering the upper HF or VHF part of the spectrum. About the simplest possible transmitter is a one transistor crystal oscillator. However, it does have some disadvantages. Keying the oscillator may cause the signal to chirp, which doesn't sound so good in the receiver. Also, its output is likely to be very low, lessening the chance of getting contacts. Adding an RF amplifier provides a transmitter that's a bit more powerful. However, it's still not very versatile. It only transmits a carrier and you'll need to key the RF amplifier to transmit a CW or Morse code signal. A bit more power and an RF power amplifier has been added. The signal will now be heard far and wide, but not necessarily only on its intended transmitted frequency, because we are missing one very major part of the transmitter circuit which without it may get unwelcome knocks on your door. The new stage is a low pass filter. Adding it to the output of the RF power amplifier ensures that the transmitter output is clean and is concentrated just on the intended frequency. It lessens interference that this transmitter would otherwise cause to other spectrum users. Here's another simple transmitter configuration. The signal starts and is generated by the radio frequency oscillator. That then goes to a frequency multiplier, then an RF amplifier, power amplifier and low pass filter before going to the antenna. The frequency multiplier circuit takes the input frequency and multiplies it, usually by two or three it can be either a diode or transistor circuit. The transistor type frequency multiplier is very similar to an RF amplifier, but it will have a tuned circuit at its output aligned to the frequency that you wish to multiply to. In the old days, transmitters with frequency multipliers were very common. It would allow a single VFO on a frequency like 7 MHz to be multiplied by two or three to provide an output on 14 or 21 megahertz. That's how you could provide several bands with the one VFO or even variable crystal oscillator. Frequency multipliers were also commonly used for VHF and UHF transmitters. That would allow a lower frequency crystal, say 16 or 18 megahertz, to be multiplied several times to provide an output in the VHF part of the spectrum. These days, more modern synthesizers have replaced the frequency multiplier chain. Another transmitter configuration, but this time with two RF oscillators. They combine in the mixer to produce a signal, an output signal, on a third frequency. That's then amplified and amplified a bit more and then filtered. The benefit of this arrangement is if you're using a free running RF oscillator on a lower frequency you can mix it with a signal on a higher frequency such as from a crystal for a more stable overall signal. While this is quite a satisfactory transmitter there are still some improvements that can be made. Notice how the output filter is only a low pass filter 
there's no other filtering in this circuit at this stage. So we've got to add something else. That something else is an RF bandpass filter. It's set to only allow signals of a particular frequency and a small range either side to get through. Other frequencies are rejected. This presents a cleaner signal to the following RF amplifier stages. Any remaining spurious signals are cut off with the low pass filter at the end near the antenna. This block diagram illustrates the simplest possible for the HF bands. Previously there were two RF oscillators. This time I've taken out one of them and substituted an audio frequency amplifier. The input of that is connected to a microphone. The output of the mixer is a radio frequency signal that's been impressed with modulation from the audio amplifier. That goes to the usual bandpass filter and successive amplifier stages. The output from this sort of transmitter is a double sideband suppressed carrier signal. Note though that the amplifier stages do need to be linear, otherwise the output will be distorted. What if we want to make the transmitter into a receiver? Well, it's pretty much similar blocks, except we've reversed some of them. The incoming signal from the antenna is filtered. It can even be filtered with the same circuitry used as the low pass filter in the transmitter. It then goes into a stage of amplification, which may be optional for something on the lower HF band, and you can see here the writing is upside down, because I've had to reverse the amplifier, so that the amplifier input is fed from the antenna side, and the output to the following stage. There's an RF bandpass filter, which again might be optional in a simple design, and then the mixer, actually the same circuitry as before. The signal is beat against a locally generated RF signal from the RF oscillator you see here and fed to an audio amplifier. Again, connected in reverse, the output from that then goes to a speaker or headphones. Here's a transceiver reusing many of the blocks that we described before for the transmitter and receiver separates. It's actually a block diagram for a double sideband transceiver such as the Beach 40 previously described in these videos. Starting from the antenna will follow the path of the received signal. This is when the transceiver is set in receive mode. The incoming signal from the antenna goes into the low pass filter. That's actually common to both the transmit and receiver. It's then fed to the mixer. There's a locally generated signal from the RF oscillator, in this case using a ceramic resonator on 7 MHz, which is amplified a bit and fed to the mixer. So we've got two signals being presented to the mixer. The incoming signal from the antenna and low pass filter and the locally generated signal from the RF oscillator. That's on 7 MHz. The output from the mixer then goes to an audio frequency amplifier. That's the one with the lettering upside down. That output can then be heard in a pair of headphones or even a speaker on strong signals. Now on transmit side, a few different stages are in play, although we're also recycling the use of some others. The incoming audio from the microphone goes to another audio frequency amplifier the output of that goes to the mixer. The oscillator output from the mixer goes via an RF amplifier. So we've once again got two signals being presented to the input of the mixer. That signal from the mixer goes to an RF amplifier. This is only used in transmit. It goes to an RF power amplifier, again only used in transmit. And then to our low pass filter where it's cleaned up. That's then fed directly to the antenna. So that explains how a very simple double sideband transceiver works in block diagram form. What if we want to generate SSB? There are several different methods, but we'll talk about the filter method here. 
A locally generated RF signal is generated by the RF oscillator, or often called the carrier oscillator. There's also a signal coming from the microphone that's amplified by a one transistor or similar audio frequency amplifier. Both those signals are combined in the mixer. There's both a sum and difference frequency, but one of those is taken and filtered by the bandpass filter. These four blocks together are all that's required to generate an SSB signal. One problem though, it's only on one frequency. So we need to add some other stages to get it onto multiple frequencies, or even a segment such as an amateur band. To shift the frequency, the signal from the bandpass filter goes to a mixer and RF oscillator. If you've ever come across an any 602 ic that's exactly what it is an RF oscillator and a mixer in the one chip. If you make the frequency of the RF oscillator variable, then the output will cover a band of frequencies. However, beware, the output of mixers are very dirty, containing at least two different frequencies, and we normally want only one. That's why at the output of the mixer, there should always be an RF bandpass filter, which cleans it up. The transmitted signal at this stage is still very low level, so it needs a bit of help. After the bandpass filter are several RF amplifier stages, eventually ending up in a low pass filter and then the antenna. This is a complete SSB transmitter. Just adding a few more stages like we did with the direct conversion receiver becoming a double sideband transceiver can be possible and make the whole thing an SSB transceiver. Something like the BitX is an excellent example of this sort of design approach. Here's the block diagram of a simple FM transmitter. FM is commonly used on the VHF bands. Its bandwidth is too wide for most HF purposes. The operator speaks into the microphone and that's amplified by an audio amplifier. That varying signal goes into an RF oscillator. Well, not quite. It actually slightly pulls its frequency up and down. It does that with a component called a varactor diode. You apply a varying voltage to it and its capacitance varies. A varying capacitance can be used in either a tuned circuit or in series with a crystal to vary the frequency that's produced by the RF oscillator. In that way, it varies or modulates the transmitted signal. That low level signal goes, in the case of a VHF transmitter, to a frequency multiplier. That's amplified further, further again, filtered and then fed to the antenna. And that's a basic FM transmitter. If you've ever built a wireless microphone or FM bug, it can be even simpler. It may not require any multiplier stages at all. However, that arrangement tends to be unstable, especially if you're using a free-running RF oscillator. Once you know about stages, then it becomes a lot easier for you to be able to read block diagrams. A bit like knowing the schematic symbols to read a circuit diagram. This skill helps you understand how equipment works, and also helps you build equipment more easily. For instance, if you don't have all parts for an amplifier stage, then you can jump online or delve into a book and find a possible alternative circuit. You may be able to substitute that circuit, provided things like the basic function, RF levels, impedance matching and so forth are all OK. Therefore, understanding stages is key to you being able to understand and construct practical electronic projects.